Hello, my name is Jakub Mitura and uh, I will tell you a couple words about how we will learn this semester and why we will learn this semester. So first, who I am? My name, uh, I am nuclear medicine physician, uh, but I am also the teacher for a couple of years now. And basically, uh, I am specializing in basic sciences. So, why those basic sciences are important for you? Uh, I am quite sure that during learning uh, those sciences like physiology, anatomy, biophysics, biomechanics, and things like that, uh, you will think whether you would uh, use it uh, anyhow during your career. Uh, and it is an important question. This is also something, as you can see uh, in the background, that was uh, addressed by the science. Uh, and uh, this question is extremely important. Uh, the short answer is it is important because without understanding basic sciences you would be unable to uh, get the idea what are you doing. Yes, so you can learn the procedures without learning basic sciences, but you cannot fully understand them. Uh, this is a short answer, but uh, we need a more detailed answer uh, for each module. Yes, for each module uh, I will ask you a question and then we'll discuss why it was important. So, how? Uh, learning how to learn uh, is also a very important topic. Uh, I will uh, give you, of course, some additional materials. Some of you already have some good ideas how to do it. Uh, but I would all want also to explain you why I had made such decisions to create such workflow uh, during our course. So first of all, uh, generally one of the most important things during uh, learning process uh, is in this idea, testing versus reading. Uh, I suppose that uh, quite frequently when you were learning uh, for some exams, for some classes, uh, you were you were trying to uh, read and read and read and read and read. And many times the same text and to hoping that you will remember all. But it is not the best strategy, not the most effective strategy. The most effective strategy is to test. And the most important thing in order to get everything in your head is testing. That's why there will be a lot of tests during our meetings. Uh, generally, every module will be connected with some tests in order uh, to boost something called retrieval and that I will talk about in a moment. But we'll have two kinds of tests during uh, our meetings, online or, uh, or um, contact ones. Uh, we'll have open questions also, yes, and closed. Closed ones are very easy to understand. Uh, you just need to uh, mark whether the answer is correct or incorrect. Generally, I do multiple correct answers, so there may be more than one. Yes, you will see it by the, uh, in the test, but I need to stress it now also. The other thing would be open questions. Open questions, uh, and now, why it's important. What do the research say about such open questions, and how do I want you to answer those open questions? Uh, there is something called the Feynman Technique. Uh, this is something uh, that is quite popular in the physics backgrounds. Uh, Albert Einstein, Feynman, uh, were, they were one of the smartest people um, they ever born. Um, what is the Feynman technique and how it's connected to open questions, how it's connected to our course? Uh, the Feynman told that, uh, the Einstein told, if you can't explain it to six year old, you don't understand it yourself. And this is a very important idea. Uh, it means that when you try to uh, answer the question in simple terms, uh, phrasing in, in a simple words, uh, it shows whether you understand it or not. Uh, if you are able to explain somebody else or yourself in simple terms, it means that you understand the topic. 
this is the very simple way of self-testing yes so you can try uh, for example when you are commuting or when you are swimming or when you are in, in the gym uh, you can try to explain yourselves some topics that you were learned uh, last week yes for example i do it uh, every day during swimming uh, but you have different chores uh, and different ideas uh, however when you would answer my questions my open questions I would like you to phrase them in the simple terms and there will be a lot of them because it's effective other thing that is important uh, for retrieval uh, so first what is retrieval retrieval is a technique that uh, is trying to get some information from your head uh, so of course you have learned something but uh, the pure process of getting this information out for example by speaking for example by filling the test for example by thinking about this uh, by doing some exercises by using it in practice this is retrieval so you, um, getting this information from your head uh, I suppose that you had such some feeling on such feeling during uh, a test that you had learned something you had it uh, at the tip of your tongue uh, but still you cannot uh, get this information from your head yes uh, this is the problem of retrieval and retrieval can be trained can be trained mainly by testing that I uh, already talked about but it can also be uh, further trained by spacing what is spacing spacing is uh, getting back to the same topics after some time so after uh, some time you forget parts of the topics that you had learned so you need to put extra effort to remind it yes so this is how the spacing works it forces you to put some extra effort in reminding yourself about the facts that you had learned earlier and this extra effort uh, is good generally uh, I suppose you had already learned that putting extra effort is uh, what needs to be done in order to learn effectively so spacing is one more technique to uh, improve your retriever improve your remembering for uh, long term remembering okay one more thing there was also a study uh, um, some meta-analysis so meta-analysis is a study of studies when we combine a lot of different studies about mind maps uh, as you can see in this table uh, there were a lot of different types uh, of mind mapping uh, <coughs> introduced and the most effective most helpful for students to learn a way of mind mapping way of note making is was collaborative uh, mind, mind mapping what does it mean? It means that uh, there was some topic uh, and the students needs, w needed to uh, coordinate in some groups to create mind maps. Uh, what are the mind maps? You can see at the top, uh, top right. So generally these are some schematics. There are a lot of free tools uh, that you can use for mind mapping. We will use Google Drawings. Uh, I will post uh, some materials how to use Google Drawings in order to create mind maps in a collaborative way. Uh, but of course for your personal needs, yes, not connected to our course, you can use any software. For example, when I am learning, I'm using FreeMind, but uh, I am not, we will not use FreeMind on our classes because it's not good for collaborative work. Uh, for collaborative work, the Google Drawings would suffice. I suppose they are the best idea that I had. Um, okay, so how would it look like? Uh, after each lesson uh, in uh, Asakadu portal, you will also have a task to create uh, two mind maps. Yes, so you would need to uh, divide your group into two. Uh, and I would want to get after each, each module the two mind maps. Yes, so half of the group would create one mind map, the other would create the other one. Uh, 
and the better one uh, would have the possibility to uh, score some additional points. Uh, okay, of course, this is not the whole of the research uh, connected to learning. Uh, I would, of course, uh, use more of it uh, on you, whether you would uh, get idea whether I'm using it or not. However, I wanted to create this video just to uh, just because you have a right to understand what we are doing. Uh, just because it would be hard semester. Uh, we would need to learn really a lot. Uh, you will need to put really a lot of effort to it. And I would want you to see a sense in it. Thank you very much.